It's back. so we can tilt this forward. But what we're going to do is we're going to, and both tests will be with the back off, we're going to throw a 12-inch speaker in here because while this is a pretty decent speaker, it's just really small, and I think it starts to flarp out uh, when the clean channel is boosted. And then we're going to take a look at those tubes, which are kind of suspect. I've got a pair of GT groove tubes that we're going to put in there for a little more fender gurr. And then we're going to see if we can't bias the electronics because it is a little on the fizzy side and it's got the one uh, B tube in there for the preamp. I think it's a BH7, double check. But I think we can bias that with a trim pot inside. So we'll take a look at that. We'll see if it's louder. We'll see if the bigger speaker has better bass response and we'll see if we can reduce the typical Marshall fizz with more modern style grit. Mm, you know what I'm talking about. Still tight. I'm going to put a V-type speaker in this, which I think will sound good. All right, so we'll be back. I'll take you out into the garage. We'll do these mods. It'll be awesome. Well, very good. We've moved out to the garage. A uh, bit of a mess right now. Got stuff all over speakers extra cabs selling the monoprice if you want to buy my monoprice it's tricked out you can um contact me on facebook or old guy brian old guy jamming on facebook and or on youtube it's gonna be about 50 dollars shipping though it's up for sale though for 250 so 300 bucks get you a tricked out monoprice with an upgraded speaker in fact i'll put whatever speaker you want in it um, ET65 or a Swamp Thing or a repaired Greenback. All right, but here we go. Um, I'm going to cut out a little notch down here so that the new speaker can sit below the uh, level of this wood. And I've marked up here, I'm going to have to take the chassis out. I don't want to get it dusty, throw stuff up on it. And I'm not sure the new speaker will slide in past... The transformer either it's gonna be it's gonna fill this space pretty well so I put a piece of tape here to mark the top of where I need the speaker to be so that kind of marks the bottom of my chassis because I'm gonna take the chassis out and we want to uh, bias that anyway we'll take these two tubes out which are really weird they're both ECC 83s and yet one has a much longer plate than this one the plate on this is so high you know and then the plate on this is higher so it's a, 
a different ECC83, but I have two 12A Y, 12A Y groove tubes to put in, which is two gain stages lower. I've noticed that one gain stage lower isn't really even enough to notice on preamp tubes, so I these days go with two gain stages lower. And uh, it really ha adds, I think it adds a lot to the crunch character of an amp. Um, if I want high gain, I play a different amp, like the Mesa or something. But for these amps, these, and the gain is still plenty high, but it just adds a lot to the, the tightness um, and the crunch characteristics of the amp. All right, so to do this, you can use a Dremel tool with some sort of wood bit like I have here. This is a wood rasp bit. Uh, I've got another one right here. Now, I'm not going to use my Dremel because the, uh, the chuck is too small to take these. So I'm going to use my air tool, my die cutter, my whatever you want to call it, an air high speed tool. And probably this router bit, or not router bit, but rasp. And I'll take this speaker out and then just mark an area here with tape as well. I'm going to cut a nice groove in there and keep fitting the speaker till it fits. I'm not going to cut out the hole either any larger. I'm going to leave that a 10 inch hole just in case I ever want to put this original speaker back in or perhaps get a Rajin Cajun. A Rajin Cajun is one of the most highly rated 10 inch replacement speakers on the internet. Anytime you look at the top 10 10 inch guitar speakers, it pops up 70% of the time in the top five pretty consistently. Um, so, and you know, you might want to put this, I might want to put this back in when I sell it, if I ever do. I think I'm going to hang on to it. I love it. It sits under my desk at work and uh, my buddy and I jam out. It's nice. Nice thing about it is that you can jack the, you can jack the, uh, the master and it's, it just sounds so good without being overwhelmingly loud. All right. So getting this thing out of here is not easy, but uh, if you've done this a few times with other things, you know that there's sometimes sticky tape and or this soft weather stripping here to uh, cut down a vibration. And uh, It was hard, tough to get out, but you just got to keep working with it, jiggling it. I ended up pulling back because sometimes that stuff sticks, so I pulled back this uh, shielding tape pretty good, but um, I was able to just bend it back into place. This all wrinkled up on me clear back into here but I was able to just kind of pull it out and rework it I could I could get a kitchen spoon and work on that some more if I wanted to but what really helps is to get yourself uh, a super thin kitchen knife and get it down between the top of the chassis and the top of the cab to help separate the the weather stripping from the top of the cab because it has a tendency to get stuck on this stuff and so I used a uh, kitchen knife that I had lying around went inside got a really thin one one of my paring knives and with a super thin blade and was able to work it along that edge and that helped free it up and then just keep rocking it and be patient it comes out you do have to take the top four screws out of the top of the cab but that's all that's holding it in. And these things are made so nice. I'm really impressed with Marshall. They have little rubber countersinks in here that are soft for those screws to uh, mesh with. Um, pretty impressed always with Marshall stuff. All right. Anyway, I'm going to start uh, digging this groove out and fitting a new speaker. And then we'll get over to this and see about biasing our uh, power amp tube. All right, it didn't take me a couple minutes to get a pretty good groove ground in that, and then it uh, didn't take too much longer after that to realize I was going to have to take out a lot more material. So we went this route, and uh, we're going to just cut a section out of the bottom of the cab. It is seven and a quarter inches. Well, I'll just show you real quick. It's a three sixteenths inch bit to make enough room for the width of the cabinet, but it's one, it's seven and a quarter to the front of the notch you're gonna wanna cut, and then three sixteenths back from that. And this is 
five inches centered in the uh, from the center of the cab, two and a half inches each way, gets you uh, a nice slot that will take the bottom of that speaker. All righty, so seven and a quarter there. Gosh, super strange focus problems. Three sixteenths inch bit, and then I'll use a jigsaw. I cut this out with a razor blade, and I'll use a jigsaw to go down each side of that. All right, that worked like a charm. There's nothing sticking out from the bottom. You can, you can barely see the cage on that, but it's up above the bottom of the cab. Speaker fits great right between some of the screws that hold the baffle in. There's no interference there. And we have just plenty of clearance on the top for the chassis to squish back in. I'll put uh, some wood screws grabbers right there there and there on each side one two three and there's going to be plenty of room for the power transformer and the output transformer on both sides and the tubes there shouldn't be any problem there so pretty good uh pretty cool um and the baffle is such that the because of the speaker placement down inside there the measurement of the baffle is such so that it's really just slightly larger than the gray area of the paper cone. So the only thing that's behind the baffle is the suspension of the speaker. This whole paper cone area is pretty much centered up in that hole, which is nice. It's good. All right. All right. We'll see if this uh, was worth it. One thing about owning something you love, like this little cab, this little amp, is that when you get to love a guitar or an amp, you can do stuff like this and you really don't care so much because you know you're keeping it forever anyway. You start putting stickers on stuff, modding it, and it's pretty cool when you know, when you have that kind of relationship with a piece of gear. All right, we're back. Speaker's in, looks great. No one will ever know the difference. Um, now we're going on to biasing this uh, 12BH7 tube, power tube. There's a connector right by that big 10 watt resistor, 10 ohm resistor. Uh, I have a couple of alligator clips on it already. It's just a, a tube connector or a two conductor white connector that you could put a connector on. All right, so I've already figured out that the bottom plug or the connector closest to me is ground and the top one, the one towards the uh, back of the board is the positive. Not that it makes a big difference. We're looking for 100 to 140 millivolts. Um, I've got the thing plugged in. My meter's connected via the alligator clips so that I don't have to get in with a probe. The amp is plugged into a 16 ohm cabinet down here. All right. So according to the thread I was following and I'll put it in the description of this video the uh, the guy said his amp was kind of biased on the cold side at 90 or so millivolts uh, he did the math and figured we needed to be um, that 140 millivolts would be 70 percent of the tube output so he figured anywhere between 100 and 140 millivolts was good I know with my Marshall 40 I preferred the lower range of the biasing. I thought it sounded a lot tighter, uh, crunchier. Marshalls, I think when they get biased too hot, sound fizzy, and I, which I don't care for at all. So we'll see what this is like right here. And then we'll see if that trim pot does anything to adjust our bias. In his uh, thread, uh, uh, he said his was cool, about 90 or 94 and uh, so right now we're looking at 90 millivolts 92 and this is millivolts DC so I'm using my Fluke 79 it's on the DC voltage if you have auto ranging you won't have to worry about it but if you have to set the range yourself then you should select the millivolt setting all right so I'm going down in here on this trim pot and we're going to See if I'm going to make note of where it was, and then so if I need to go back, I can. All right, yeah, I'll be able to see that's coming up. So 
So if I turn it counterclockwise, the voltage increases. So I'm going to go 110. with this guy's recommendation. 140 seems pretty hot. Oh, 110 might be too cold though. Another thing you can do is at this point you can plug a guitar in and see how it sounds and then adjust the bias by ear too. You're not doing any balancing between two tubes, you're just uh, biasing one tube. Uh, so you can um, you know, do it by sound as well. And the colder your tube, the more clean headroom you'll have, the less fizz, the less distortion you'll have. The hotter you bias your tube, the uh, more fizz distortion you'll have in the output stage. And your tubes also don't, according to what I've read, your tubes don't last as long if they're on the hotter side. They burn out faster. All right, so I think I'll go get my guitar, plug this in plug it in and see what it sounds like and I might play with the voltages a little bit but there you have it um that little trim pot right there to the right of those connectors uh, just cook some wire hook some wires to that connector there's our uh, output tube right there the preamp tubes are there and there just input stage other stuff but so uh, biasing this is pretty straightforward you do have to take the chassis out, but I'm looking forward to seeing what this sounds like. I'll be back later. Charm. All right, we are done with this bad boy. So, take a look at this. It uh, turned out great. Uh, plenty of room in there for the transformer, the tubes, uh, and you could probably even get the speaker in and out without taking the chassis out. But no clearance issues. Uh, nobody will be the wiser, except this thing's probably going to sound like a beast. I went ahead and did uh, settled for 120 millivolts on the bias. I thought that sounded good. Um, I got a little more clean headroom, I think, already. And some more breakup. Uh, it went back together a lot better, easier than it uh, came apart. So I'll take us inside now, and we'll uh, we'll see how it's happening. I'm excited. All right, everything's where it was, and we will roll with the queen.
with the stock tubes in. So now we're going to throw those uh, GT tubes in. A couple of these right here. I'm yelling at the mic. I should be yelling up there. <laughs> 12AY. 12AY. So we'll put these in preamps, leave everything where it is, and see what you think. All right, so new tubes clean. Good changes. Good, ch good changes. And oh my gosh, can you believe the? Uh, I have to apologize about the green shirt. <laughs> it's absolutely terrible with this guitar. But and I didn't plan to wear it that way. However, I think in another video I did with uh, the uh, it was either the Marshall DSL twenty or the EVH LBX head I was reviewing. I ended up with that green shirt on and this guitar. Uh, so I thought, gosh, what is it about the guitar and the shirt? Well, anyway, um, I'll put the, uh, so I'm really stoked with this. Um, no more tiny speaker issues, because you know what that sounds like. Uh, you could put a Rage and Cajun in there, but you can also put a 12 in, but it won't just slip in. 
and then rebiasing to 120 is where I thought it sounded nice. I don't know. And then uh, the addition of those groove tubes makes the uh, amp more uh, less fizzy overall. Has a little deeper mid range to it, a little deeper tone, and uh, more crunch available. Uh, tight, still tight. Uh, so I think uh, worthy upgrades. A couple of G tubes, groove tubes, and uh, whatever speaker you like. The V type was in the Marshall I had. I put a cream back in the Marshall, and so I had the V type lying around and might as well use it. They're cheap though, they're like 70 bucks, I think, for a V type speaker. But whatever you got lying around is great. And the, the amps just kick, kick ass, you know. It's, uh, it's fun because you can dime the master and it's still not blowing stuff off the walls. The neighbors aren't complaining. And yet it sounds, with the master dimed, it's, it sounds so good. Uh, big fan. Takes pedals like a champ also. And the Marshall cleans are great. The reverb on this, super nice as well. All right, so far out. That's a good one. Well, I'll put the link for that biasing in the description. Uh, and uh, I don't, although I don't think you need it, I showed you how to do it. So have fun. Trick out your Marshall 5 DSL. Old Guy Jammin's out. If you liked it, sub, share, thumbs up. Give me some likes. We'll keep doing it. Ciao.